What's going on everyone, Juicebags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. We are one day away now from Dungeon Defenders Awakened heading into early access, and I figured I would get ready to go with the original four heroes by jumping in for just one more and trying out floor 501 OG heroes only. Now I will be taking advantage of the Petrify combo, so I'll be using the Poison Dart Tower with Explosive Poison Destruction and Defense Rate, along with Earth Shatter Towers. Now this is not a correct sh setup for Earth Shatters in any way. Do not put this on your Earth Shatter. This is a tester relic that I move around from various places. And going with Earth Toss, Destruction and Defense Rate. Now then, I am going to use some Flame Auras and Lightning Strike Auras, however... Actually, do we not have... Oh my god! Or yeah, okay, there's some. I was going to say, do we not have any Cyborgs? We don't have... We only have one lane with Cyborgs, that's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. So I assumed I was going to be full of Cyborgs, so I grabbed my Reflect Beam Relic and threw it on Flame Auras. Uh, defense Rate, Tenacity, and Anti-Melee with Mass Destruction, Destruction, and Deadly Strikes. I'm probably still going to use that just for those Cyborgs, even though it's just not that many of them. Let's see, let's go ahead and get things started off here. Now, we've got Flyers. Flyers, of course, can be a big old pain in the butt. So I'm going to start off with a double stack of Auras right on top to try to negate the Flyers a little bit. Now, in addition to that, we're going to throw another Flame Aura here for the Skellies. Do we want to do anything else? You know what, let's use a Boost Aura too. We're going to have Destruction, Deadly Strikes, and Boosted Grasp on Power Servo, Diverse Power Servo, and Defense Range Servo. Let's see, where, where do we want to put it? Let's put it right there, and then it will... Uh, hit everything if I move that a little bit closer somewhere maybe mm, it's kind of questionable there even let's see let's go right there you know what let's just move the boost over a little bit as I do have a little bit of room on this far side God, it's so close. Is it getting it? It's not getting it. Quite disappointing, but it's clearly not getting it. I think right there it probably will get it. Let's check it out. Yeah, there we go. So we're all set there. Now here, one thing that's just ridiculously effective on the slain, and you would never think that it was, and that's just using massive knockup right there on that corner. I am going to throw in a Poison Dark Tower just for some Petrify damage as well. But, then we are going to Aura it up right here. So, let's see. Let's go... How do we want to do it? Let's go a Flame Aura there. A Flame Aura there. And one more right there. With uh, Can we get another Lightning Strike? I don't think this one is going to get the buff. It'll be alright though. And then here, we've got some massive flyer lanes as well. Now, with all that knockup going on, it only makes sense that I'd throw down a sky guard over here. Maybe even two. Let's see how the DU goes. I do think I want to use uh, two sky guards here as we have EMP long shot. Or, pardon me, we've got long shot with EMPs. So, the sky guards are definitely going to help out there. And normally, I'd like to go with a nice flame art camp right here to take care of a lot of the flyers that roll out of there. However, we're just not going to be able to with that Sky Guard. And then let's see, we got Psy Lava Wompity Womps here. They are going to be a pain in the butt, you know it. But let's go ahead and we'll just triple stack some Auras there. I kind of feel like we got Headstrong on that lane. I think this might be a good lane for a boost. Get that boosted grasp going to slow him down just a little bit there. Now, do we want... I feel like we really just need something up here. Something like that, maybe, to help petrify them up there as they come out. Now, that leaves me what? I've got 330 left for this entire area, which actually isn't terrible. 
So what I'm going to do is go one Earth Shatter, one Poison Dart Tower. This lane gets that proximity, and I do think it will be the easiest lane. So what I'm going to go here is just one Flame Aura and one Lightning Strike Aura right there just to keep it buffed. So this lane really has the potential to be my weakest lane, but with that proximity on there, it's going to help out quite a bit. Now here we got Winners here, which tells me just go ham on Flame Auras, but I still want to get my Petrify in. Let's see what we have left. If we put a Petrify setup right there, that leaves 80 left, so that's not terrible. That's not great, but that's not terrible, as we can throw in the two Flames and a Lightning Strike Aura right there. Now, I would love to pick up another Flame Aura somewhere. Hmm... This one right here, I think, is the one I'll take, because it's missing out on that buff anyway. And get a third Flame Aura in here. I do think that will help out quite a bit. And where do I want it? I feel like right there's the spot, because it's going to hit all three... Or both. it's going to hit both of those lanes, and we're just going to have a nice bit of coverage. Alright, well let's check it out and see how Wave 1 goes here. I'm very curious to see how this holds up. I've done Earth Shatters for CC on this lane once before, and it did really, really, really well. So I'm kind of hoping it's going to follow suit there. And of course, the Frost Orc's making the push over here. I could have overcapped the rate, but my intentions here are to fight in this lane, since it's the big double lane. And I don't feel like I would need to worry about overcapping the rate if this is where I'm going to be spending most of my time. We're still getting it. We're still getting it. Looking really good here. They are pushing uh, out quite a ways here. Further than I expected them to. But I think some upgrades will uh, take, it, take care of that. This is definitely where all the action is going to be this uh, match, though. That's for dang sure. Just keep jacking all these up. I think I'm going to upgrade that Flame Aura in this lane to the left. And then we're going to have to see how the Flyers do when the Flyers come out. This, That lane is actually just getting wrecked. It's doing really, really good. See, we got a big flyer push coming, and we've got a pretty heavy lane. Look at all those war boars. Holy crap. Let's get all that flushed out there. That is a heavy duty lane. I mean, that alone tells me right here that I'm really going to need some ups on these flame ours here as well. Oh. Got smoked there on that one. It looks like I've got more flyers creeping out. I think Sky Guards are putting in a lot, a lot of work here. And I think these upfront Flamers are putting in a lot of work. Let's go ahead, let's hit both of these Sky Guards. Let's hit that one as well. And then here we can get a little bit of double duty out of these RS. Upgrade both of those Flyer R's and it will benefit the lane as well. And then, let's see. We needed some more love here. That is for sure. It never hurts to keep this lane good and upgraded, so I think we're in good shape there now as well. At least 400 left, so let's hit everything over here. And then we'll throw the remainder... into getting that flame aura all jacked up there in the front. Alright, so what do we have for a boss? We've got uh, a geode rolling out. That shouldn't be too bad to deal with. Still gonna be all about the slaying. Don't stick your face in front of the Gobus. <laughs> bad things are bound to happen. Those little bombers, man, they hit like an absolute truck. But I think we'll be able to just kind of chillax back here and spray down this lane now that we've got some upgrades in place. Of course, the uh, Frost Orcs are not marching out like they were last wave as well. 
So yeah, we've got a lot of Frostfire going in that lane now. Here comes uh, the Geode Prime. I'm just going to kind of ignore it. At this point, I think my main concern needs to be the Flyers for the rest of this wave. Well, so far, so good. Just need to let this Geode out here. There we go. And then we got a nice little push coming over here. And then we've got, what, the wall of... Not Warbores this time, it's regular orcs. Let's see how the regular fatty orcs do here. I almost feel like this side could have used another Skyguard as well. But the good thing about the, the big fatty orcs is if you're using any sort of crowd control or crowd control combo, they will actually block the path. So a bunch of petrified orcs right here means no orcs are going through. And that just makes life way, way easier. I'm going to go ahead and just smack that uh, Skyguard right there twice. I'll hit both of those once. Then I feel like, I still feel like this needs to be a big area of concern. So I'm going to upgrade each of those. I'm going to cap this one out. And then let's see if I can uh, scrape up just enough mana to get a random upgrade here or there. Let's see, where do we want it? I feel like right here is the best place. It just gives me a big benefit on that mob gallery lane, plus it hits the flyers. And it looks like it's going to be Warbore City again this wave. Now what do we have for bosses this time? we got a Skelly coming right there. Let's uh, see how it goes. 554 mobs. So a pretty healthy amount of mobs rolling out here. That is for damn sure. Not having uh, faster crowd control, I probably should have switched over to a Sparkle Party pet. That may, uh, may have made life a little bit easier for me here. Because I'm not really going to need Drago's power. I don't think anybody is going to dispute that Dragolich is just the best all-around overall pet in the game. Uh, I'm pretty sure most people would agree with that statement. However, a Gatto pet with Sparkle Party can make life so much better. And here they come. Oh, I thought I heard an assassin popping. Maybe not. Maybe not quite yet. We got some mobs at the core over here. Ooh, that was a little close. Just super, super healthy Lava Guardians. I think we got that lane pretty much wiped out. And then now we've got the army of warbores. And it's, the more bunched out they're going to be, <laughs> the more effective this Frostfire is going to be. Look at that. Oh my god. That's the power of exploding enemies when they're packed in tight. That is for damn sure. Okay, where is Slakelion coming from? He's coming from up top there. We're just going to get him wrecked right up where he stands. Because we're going to have to kill him two more times here before this is over. We got Warbores out the what what again. And we got a Goblin. And we got Gribs. And then of course we've got Slakelion. But one nuke away from taking care of that guy. How are we doing over here? We got Frost Orcs are back. So we're going to want to watch this lane for sure. We've got somebody sneaking over here. Oh, Lava Guardian should have known. Let's get this one wrecked up before the Assassins come. Another nuke to the Biscuit. Frost Orcs Central. 
All right, now here comes Shieldy Gobs. Shieldy Gobs, I'm gonna want to get some damage on. All right, Shieldy Gobs is down, and then we've got Gribs over here, I believe, right? Now, Gribs, if Gribs would just come out within the middle of all these warbors, oh, he is gonna be in such, such trouble. Is he gonna be willing to do it? I'm gonna wait and not. Looks like the Frostfire is already taken over just because of the sheer mob count there on that lane. I was hoping there was gonna be a whole lot of mobs there to blow up on Gribs, but sadly, all the mobs are dead, so. We'll just give him a nuke and get it over with. There we go. And we got a nice pack over here. Looks like all flyers making the push. Right, and here we go in wave number five. Now, we've got a few easier bosses. We do have an ogre, which will be nice and healthy, over in that far lane. So I'm going to want to keep an eye on it. However, everything is doing pretty darn well. And we actually made it through this wave with no... Or made it through this map with no assassins. So that's just a remarkable thing. No doubt there. We got a Yeti. Let's say hi. Just Drago. Drago didn't even uh, get his scare off. Poor little Drago. What a shame. See, 520 mobs left. And here comes the ogre. Now, it's not a uh, super healthy ogre. So that'll be easier. Actually, Thork has got more health than the ogre. What is wrong with that pitcher? All right. Well, let's get Thork out of the way here. Thork got the nuke. It looks like that ogre is going to be dead already. And I am going to have to watch for any lava guardians that get sneaky. There's still 400 mobs left. So this is far from over, there's no doubt there. Big old frame rate drop right there, holy crap. Just gonna continue to watch the mini-map and uh, any mobs that are making a push of course I'll run over to that lane, but this lane with all these frosties definitely needs to be my area of focus here. And here comes the Lava Guardians. I do want to give a little bit of assistance to these Flyers real quick, though. And then I'll get right on that Lava Guardian. He's got a nuke headed his way. Here we go. First Lava Guardian down. I think there's going to be more, though. Here now, it actually looks like it's all Flyers left. Very, very nice. So there we go. Floor 501. I didn't think I was ever going to do 501. But 501 is now in the bag here with just the OG heroes only. So we're a day away, y'all. It's getting here. DDA is going to be here in no time. But thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to click that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. And I will be back soon with more Dungeon Defenders. And it's going to have an A at the end of it here really, really quick. So thanks again. And I will see you next time around. Take it easy.